Africa. What they need is manpower and they're not getting that. Yeah. No one wants to send troops to them. No one, because they don't want a nuclear war. That's yeah, basically what it is, bro. You, if they send troops to help the Ukraine, to stand there with the Ukrainians and yeah. shoot back at the Russians, I can guarantee you, I'm telling you now, Putin's going to go, oh yeah? Okay, big red button. Let's start a war. I doubt that so much. But Russia could just walk in there and take over straight away, but they haven't, so. That's true. Because there's still yeah. a resistance right now. But there's still what a resistance resist right what now. A resistance to a whole army of Russia against Ukraine. There's no resistance, bro. Small Ukraine with a small amount of um, army, with a small amount of artillery, yeah, and firepower. And you've got Ukraine, yeah, with a massive amount of army, massive nuclear power, massive money to back. And you're telling me, yeah, that... Oh, yeah, no so one's so throwing you're nuclear telling me, weapons. All right, all right, all right. You know me, that. Let me... people big up yourselves every time and all the time back again with another episode of out of the box podcast with uh, myself jago and the legends that be with me all the time how we doing people welcome back to another episode if you're enjoying this don't forget to obviously leave a like i am gmg news big shout out to the panel this is otv and let's have a cracking episode today peace people them people them people them Welcome again. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Big up the panel. Let's get started. Boom. So uh, we're back again this week with season four, episode two on the Russian invasion. And this week we're going to be looking at Ukraine and the story behind it and where they are now and everything around Ukraine. So uh, we know it's getting mad uh, day by day. You know, things are happening. What's going on right now anyway, Peter? So, at the present moment, from what I know, um, Kherson, which is a major city in the Ukraine, has actually been taken. So, Russians okay. now take that. Not not only that, they've also taken over a nuclear plant in the Ukraine right now. So, now they have, they have access to more nuclear materials. Ah. More plutonium, more uranium, more more whatever you want to use whatever's being used to make nuclear weapons they've got access to more resources now you see what i'm saying and not only that obviously they're getting the more they do this the closer they're getting to kiev and i understand that people are like oh but he's not what he was expecting is not happening i think people are forgetting that the media's kind of shying away from the fact he's still getting there yeah yeah you get what i'm saying so yeah, that's, I mean, that's like in a little bit of a nutshell right now, anyway. Even on what you just said there, yeah, you know, the media portray that he wants to get to this place and he's not getting there fast enough. But in Putin's head, that he might be doing exactly what he's going to be doing exactly at the time that he wants to be doing it at. Listen, yeah. the only person that can think, the only person that can know what Putin is thinking is Putin. Putin himself. Is yeah. We're only seeing what he's letting us see at the end of the day. He's probably got a, yeah. like I was saying, like on the stereo and previous episodes of this, he moves like a mobster. He's probably got yeah. other tactics of infiltrating yeah. Ukraine. From the mud, bro. You know from the mud, you get me? Like the dude's from the mud, man, grew up on road. You get me? Jeez. So this first video is Russia and Ukraine. I'm um, History of Rivalry by TRT World. Boom. Two neighbors who share the same ancestry, a common history, speak nearly the same language, follow the same church, yet often seem to find themselves at odds with each other. Russia and Ukraine. Here's how these two nations have descended into an inevitably recurring conflict rooted in centuries-long disputes, threatening the prospect of peace and security in the region and the world alike. Both Russians and Ukrainians share the same ancestry dating back over a millennium. Specifically, Kiev, the current capital of Ukraine, is the historic home to the first Eastern Slavic state in history. And Russian is actually a Slavic term used to refer to Scandinavians with red hair who arrived as Vikings and conquered the indigenous Slavic tribes. It is on this conflict-ridden land that both Russians and Ukrainians built their national identities. As such, Kiev holds a colossal significance for both peoples. But it was not until the 18th century that Moscow-based Russian Tsars included Ukraine as part of their empire. Wary of the rise of Ukrainian nationalism by the 1840s, 
the Tsars prohibited the practice and teaching of the Ukrainian language in order to ensure political control and unity across a land referred to as Europe's breadbasket. If you open a map, you see the geographical importance of Ukraine, particularly for Russia, is unquestionable. Jeez. So, pause it. <laughs> so if you saw by that little piece of map there, yeah, so basically taking Ukraine completes Russia. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely completes it, basically. You see what I'm saying? Look how unless it's obviously it's they unless they got if you if you see there's a little touch of blue there. So unless they cover up that, that piece there as well, like taking Ukraine means Russia's completely. And yeah, then but then what, doing what, what, doing. Then, what then goes to say that they're not gonna want to take the bit up towards Estonia, the they're Russia not gonna want to take like all these yeah, other top and, then, and make it because bigger. Looking at Ukraine, like within this fight and looking at Russia, like come it's on. David, it's David and Goliath, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like People out here with guns and other people out here with sticks. Think about it, just just alone, just from this picture, I'll say this, right? So the Ukrainian army has around 200,000 members right now, yeah? Obviously not counting the people that have passed away or sadly and stuff as well, right? So, and that's the thing, that's not talking reserves either. If we're talking reserves and like active members, we're talking maybe around 450,000 to 500,000, yeah, for the Ukraine, yeah. Russia has 850,000 active members right now, yeah, and they have also got 250,000 on reserve. Wow. There's yeah. no, there's you know no, what I mean? Yeah, there's no talk, mate. There's it's no only talk. a matter of time. It's only a matter of time to me. Russia, one of the biggest producers of um, guns as well, so. Uh-huh. That's going to play a crucial factor. <laughs> By 1922, as the Tsars were dethroned, Russia became what is known as the Soviet Union, a totalitarian form of governance that included mass agricultural and industrial plans. In the 1930s, when Ukrainian farmers descended against the Soviet Union's collective push, they found themselves on the bitter end of the infamous Soviet leader Joseph Stalin's Iron Fist. Stalin, responsible for the death of millions, carried out what is referred to as Holodomor, a campaign of famine, mass killings, and the mass relocation of more than 10 million people. The Second World War from 1939 to 1945 deepened the schism between Russia and Ukraine further. Why? Well, many Ukrainians fought alongside the Nazis against their common enemy, Russia. But by 1945, Russia emerged victorious, and Stalin didn't forgive or forget. So he carried out mass deportations of Ukrainians to Siberian work camps known as gulags. Oh, all in all, shit. Ukraine lost the, the gulag population during the war. One gesture, though, that is perhaps a silver lining in the century of hostility and violence between Russia and Ukraine was one carried out by Nikita Khrushchev, the Soviet leader who was of Ukrainian descent, actually gifted Crimea to Ukraine in 1954. Why? Well, some say as an apology to what Stalin did, but the exact reason is still disputed and unknown by most. I First remember the Cold night. War was mad. This the Cold War was crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. I swear that's where the Russians had missiles aimed at America from Cuba. Wow. They were Russia moments away. After the West emerged victorious in the Cold War. As such, Ukraine declared its independence alongside numerous newly founded republics, breaking away from their communist nightmare. However, this was not the end of Russia as we know it. Still a superpower, political control and territorial interests persisted particularly in response to European and more widely Western influence embodied by NATO and the European Union. Russia and Ukraine were still at odds, particularly over the control of the Black Sea, hence the importance of this part here, Crimea. Crimea. By 1997, Russia recognized Ukraine's borders, a matter made easier by the presence of a pro-Russian leader in Kiev, Leonid Kuchma. Kuchma's Russian bias didn't last long, as he was replaced by pro-Western candidate Viktor Yuchenko, who won elections in 2001 and again in 2004. However, an economic crisis, the gradual disintegration of the opposition and Russian-induced natural gas pressure led to protests and eventually Yushchenko's demise. In 2010, Viktor Yanukovych was elected to power, a pro-Russian candidate. 
In the same year, the Ukrainian parliament withdrew its candidacy from NATO, and by 2013, its association agreement with the European Union. But this did not come without consequence. Tens of thousands of people dissatisfied with the nation's political direction flooded the streets in what was dubbed the Maidan Revolution, or Revolution of Dignity. 77 protesters were killed by security forces, and Yanukovych fled to his patrons in Russia. In March 2014, a month after these clashes, Russia moved swiftly and annexed Crimea, triggering the biggest clash between the West and Russia since the Cold War. In April 2014, Russian paramilitary groups also took over Donetsk and Luhansk in a region known as Donbas in eastern Ukraine. As the Ukrainian military tried to retain its territorial integrity, Russian forces moved beyond their border in what is a largely Russian populated area in eastern Ukraine. More deaths, displacements, and media rows led to a ceasefire by February 2015. A frail one, but just enough for both sides to take a break. Back in Kiev, a pro Western party headed by businessman Petro Poroshenko had won yet another set of elections. With parliamentary majority established, Ukraine re signed an association agreement with the EU in 2017. Meanwhile, Russia, adamant in keeping its own control of Crimea, constructed a bridge between its mainland and Crimea. Today, Russia has recognized the Donetsk People's Republic and maintains a tight grip on Crimea. The schism, as you can see on the news every day, keeps getting deeper, with the possibility of a new world war and nuclear entanglements being openly discussed. Even faith is unable to bridge the gap, as even the Ukrainian church has broken away from the Russian Orthodox hierarchy. And despite the common ancestry, Ukraine remains a site of Russian and Western rivalry. So old wounds keep reopening and seem to be far from settled. Thoughts? Mad. There is not going to be any type of resolve in sight between these two. No. I mean, they're the very that. tightly linked, isn't they? Yeah, you know, and obviously because they've broken away. Russia obviously feels away, and it's like I was saying previously, he just wants that Soviet Union back, so he's going to do whatever he feels is fucking deemed possible for him to do to get that country back. So, yeah, that just kind of cements it in my head, man, this this war's coming. Yeah, it's peak for the like, Ukrainians, because all they've been trying to do is live their lives, and like they're backwards and forwards in this power struggle of... Do they belong to the Soviet Union? They are Soviet, they are Russia, you know, all the rest of it. And, you know, they're, they're like you say, they're quite small, man. They're just trying to do their thing. And it's like quite peak for them. But like you say, man, it's not, there ain't going to be an end until someone's got got what they wanted. And we know who that is. Actually, man, mm -hmm. yeah. What are you saying? Yeah, are yeah, you feeling about it? Bro, it's, it's a madness to me, isn't it? Like, I feel like it's a bit of, firstly, it's a bit of a bully thing. You know what I mean? I, I do feel like he's got a mad tight grip on Crimea, right? Mm -hmm. So he's like, well, listen, I've got Crimea. Obviously, Donetsk, Luhansk, Donbass, they're Russian populated parts of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I feel like that he sees those as two openings to take Ukraine as a whole. And then again, once he takes it whole, mm -hmm. Russia's complete. Completely complete. My only question to that is, what happens next? Mm. Is he going to just keep it as, right, I'm complete. I don't want no madness from no one. I'll keep to myself, you lot keep away from me. Or is, it gonna be, or is it going to be, actually, I want to go a bit bigger. And we know that like the, there's certain other countries, we know that don't get on with Russia, that are close to Russia. And it was like, all right, cool. Let's just start taking out these little bits, Estonia and all these Baltic countries. And you know what I mean? Let's let's just start taking these like little by little. They won't take long because they're small. They won't take long at all. Yeah. Reckon what? 10 days and they'll be halfway through that. You yeah. know what I mean? So like, then all of a sudden they're massive. Who yeah. are they looking to take on? Is it going to be another Cold War? Is it going to be another World War? Is it going to be a nuclear war? People, mm -hmm. let me know in the comments. Jeez. And if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe, turn on post notifications, because that way you'll be informed each and every single time that a new video pops out on the box. And don't forget to check out the very first episode of Out the Box Bite Size, which is available for you to listen to exclusively over on Stereo. Let's get back to the video. Done, Peace. So what this next video is a short one. 
Why mm -hmm. isn't Ukraine a member of NATO? Now, we all wonder this right now. Like, you know, Ukraine has been independent and they've had an opportunity to join NATO, just like other countries, which a lot of them did join NATO, benefited from the team. Now, I don't know why they didn't. I mean, is it because they will be seen as blatantly going against Russia and Rus now on Russia's border? Is that why? I don't even know. Well, I, I, I do know for a fact that if Ukraine was to join NATO, yeah, Putin seeing that as a direct threat. Yeah, 100. Well, because they will have, obviously, they will have, have to get involved. You know what I mean? They will have to get involved then. It's like if you attack a NATO country, NATO will call on the countries that are involved in it. If I remember correctly, including America, you know, and maybe us, you know what I mean? And we would have to go in with troops. No we, all what. Know, we all know Putin's got that mobster mentality, like you say, you know, what I mean? someone opposes him, it's just like, it's all, yeah. You know I mean? and who, and and who's, who's he's not back? a man of words, he's a man of action. That's the only thing else. Who's, who's got his back? This is the thing that, like, because. At the moment, not, we're not really worried about Putin as a NATO or as a, as a nation like that. But if Putin had a mad back, then people might be a bit more, you know, bit well, worried think, about what could happen. I do think that's something that we should take an episode to look at. Yeah, you definitely. know what I mean? Which is like, who's helping who? Yeah. You know what I mean? Who's actually backing who in it? Like, who's so, died did they fall on? You know? you know what I mean? Because I do have a little bit of a notion with that. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. I do have a little notion with that. I will say it, but I won't obviously go into it too deep. We'll go into it a bit deep another time. You know yeah. what I mean? But I do feel that China is doing a, what I class as a union bank. Yeah, which is was owned by Prescott Bush and he funded World War One and World War Two, both the British and the Germans. Yeah. So to me, I feel like China is doing a bit of that because they're helping the Ukrainians and the Russians. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we've been doing that for a, for a minute. We've been doing that with Ukrainian soldiers for a minute. That's the governor. That's the governor. Nationals and it was led in 2008 that the Ukraine would one day join the Russian army. tension between the Ukraine and Russians has continued to increase. This includes Russia's military buildup close to the U to Ukraine. All right, very short. I mean, that's it. That's kind of like, uh, from what I see is that mm. they've had the opportunity, they've been getting trained um, and they've given them opportunity through the MAP scheme to actually get in involved with NATO's uh, thing, innit? Mm -hmm. Since 2008, that was like 15, yep. years, 15 years ago, so. Here's the thing though for me though, bro. Like, Russia's in their country right now though. Yeah. You know what I mean? like. They're in their country right now, and they directly ask for help from people in it. Yeah. Like NATO, I'm sure NATO is one of the people they have asked for oh, help. Yeah, of course. Considering they are earning, 
an enhanced opportunities partner from since 2008. Yeah, yeah. so it means they get they get more access to NATO, even yeah. though they're not part of NATO. So I'm sure NATO they can ask NATO for certain help, but NATO's like we're involved, but we mm. don't want to be to be involved. You see what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm saying like even though that it's all, all that's going on, but what are you doing to help them right now? Isn't it? That's true. 100 percent 100 percent let us know what you guys think in the comments down below um so this is the third and final video yeah, um yeah. everyone is afraid ukraine president hits out of the west says left alone in fight against russia this is by um hindustan times Jeez. yeah and this is this is obviously a video including a, a little talk from the Ukrainian president's um was his name his name is Vladimir Zelensky. Yeah, wicked brilliant. Але є й друге. Ми залишаємось на одинці у захисті нашої держави. Хто готовий воювати разом з нами? Чесно, не бачу таких. Хто готовий дати Україні гарантію вступу до НАТО? Чесно. It feels like he's getting no yeah. help at all. Is that? It like it, it looks like by the looks of it that he's getting no help whatsoever. They're just going, listen, bruv, like we're just gonna have to see how bad Russia goes, isn't it? But like surely we know good. that they are getting help though, aren't they? They're getting... Yeah, it's like he's what help, are they? What help think... are they actually getting though? What well, are they actually getting? I think, getting? Think, what getting to allude... I think what he was trying to allude more to was then yeah. publicly help it because as he was saying in his statement, they're afraid. And as we said earlier, like, it's like they publicly don't want to be seen to be backing them. So maybe well, they that, are. That, I, think, I, mean, you know I mean, I hear that. The main help they need is on the land, isn't it? Yeah, but I'm sure they're getting sent stuff to... Yeah, but bro. Bruv, you gotta remember something. Even though they're getting sent guns and all sorts, remember the saying, bruv, guns don't kill people. People kill people, bruv. Yeah. And how many people are Russia sending in? Thank and you. how many people do they have? Yeah, so they've got well enough. So in other words, they're gonna out. need they don't need just weapons, they don't need just they need actual they, don't, they need people, they need troops, yeah, they need, they got they got need manpower. Weapons. They got enough weapons. Yeah, but they need manpower, bro. They need people. They need numbers. They bro, ain't got the Russia, numbers. Russia, bro. Ain't, Russia ain't sending in eight hundred thousand people at a time. They send in. Bro, in but every time you got That's to what we know, store, bro. Oh. Every time, every time a Russian gets popped down, another two's coming straight back at them. Yeah, of course. Yeah, every yeah. time you pop down a Ukrainian, that's it. You pop down a Ukrainian. Yeah, but they're, what, they're in the numbers, say, bro. They're what, asking to send troops to them. Yeah, but regardless of that, yeah, you, know, you don't know that. Like, like I said, they're sending in little skirmishes, yeah? Like, that isn't sending in a whole army, is it? It's not sending but at in the same time, army. that's they're all we need. Like what they need... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The what they need is manpower and they're not getting that. Yeah. No one wants to send troops to them. No one, because they don't want a nuclear war. Because that's yeah, basically what it is, bro. You, if they send troops, to help the Ukraine, to stand there with the Ukrainians and yeah. shoot back at the Russians, I can guarantee you, I'm telling you now, Putin's gonna go, oh yeah? Okay, big red button. Let's start a war. I doubt that so much. But go on, let's Bruv, see. he said that, it. bro. He yeah, I know he's that. I know he said that. But he said in the interview, he said in the interview, he said that we had. But he's saying a lot of things. They're only doing a few of the things that he said. Remember, so as I said, bro, you, know, you might not be it, doing what he wants, but he's still yeah. doing stuff. Exactly, he's doing it very slowly, you know. All right, but this, do you not think it's inevitable that it's going to get to that though? Well, Rus Russia could just walk in there and take over straight away, but they haven't. So that's true because there's still yeah. a resistance right now. But there's still what, a resistance what, right what, now. Resistance to a whole army of Russia against Ukraine. There's no resistance, bro. You just told me, yeah, Bro. they need men. They need men. You just said that they need men because they can't fight a walk and they ain't got enough men. But if Russia's got that many men, then Russia should have just walked straight in. Because there isn't enough resist. They haven't Bro, got if enough men to someone fights back and they're good at fighting back, yeah. obviously there's going to be some sort of a resistance. But yeah, over a matter two, of time, the they're going to lose manpower and then the they're going to need more troops. We've got a small Ukraine with a small amount of um, army, with a small amount of 
artillery, yeah, and firepower. And you've got Ukraine, yeah, with a massive amount of army, massive nuclear power, massive money to back. And you're telling me, yeah, that... Oh, yeah, no so one's throwing nuclear weapons. Right, right, right. You're telling me this. You're telling me this. It's like this, yeah. It's like Let me Man United, this question to... it's like okay. Man United playing Elton FC, yeah. <laughs> it's like a Man United who is fully funded, got the players and everything to do on the pitch against Elton FC who don't not funded by anyone. They just stand out around the corner mm. to me. Obviously, mm. Man United could run through for Man United not to score any goals or just you know take a couple of possessions, yeah, and make a little bit of an advancement, isn't, that ain't what it is. Okay. If it was Man United, if, if, yeah. if you're using a football analogy, bro, people can have bad games, you know. All right, well, people let me... Have have yeah, one game, one game. This is a war, bro. This is not over one let day. Let me this question Yeah, and a war can yeah. last days, weeks, months, yeah. years. A game, you you know, like minutes. Both a game yeah. day, like minutes. Just... Okay, so obviously off what you two were just saying and in the little back and forth that you man just had and obviously I, like, I, I, I do agree with you, Jago, to the extent of how big the country is. Why do you think that they haven't just gone full force in, as you're saying, you know, we're talking about people and manpower and all this, that why have they not just gone in and just taken it? Why are they doing these little skirmishes, as you were saying? So, like I said, he don't, obviously he doesn't want it, does he? Because realistically, listen, you're telling me that a man like Putin is sitting there, yeah, and he's happy that he's losing money, yeah, when he mm -hmm. can just go and take the whole thing over. He's losing human lives when he can just take the whole thing over. He don't, he's just like letting, letting the whole thing go this slow. Just for me, it just means that he doesn't want it, innit? He just wants the reaction. That's all he wants. He wants a reaction. He wants someone to do something so then he can then start saying, okay, cool, right, this is my next move. Because we don't so know what he's next move is. Do you think he's warmongering then? Yeah, war, fear mongering. Yeah, definitely getting yeah. reaction. Definitely. Pedro, what would you what do you have to say on the situation? So with me, yeah, I see it like this. He does want to take Ukraine. I don't believe like I believe there's fear mongering involved, and I do agree with Jay on that. There is a fear a level of fear mongering involved, but he's not going to do all of this for nothing. He's not going to bow up and do stuff like this for nothing. Yeah, I do think that. All right, cool. The way he wanted to do it has not worked. You know what I mean? But he's still get he's still prodding through. He's still just prodding and prodding and prodding yeah. and prodding, and he will not stop prodding until he actually breaks through. Right? Here's the thing: the Ukrainians have a de as, as we just saw in in one of them in the little video we saw. They are being trained by the UK. If they're being trained by the UK, nine times out of ten, they're being trained by the SAS. The SAS are classed as one of the best, if not arguably the best force in the world, right? You know what I mean? So if that's the case, they're gonna they're gonna know how to fight. You know what I mean? They're gonna know how to shoot a gun properly and aim and all sorts properly. So it's gonna cause a resistance. Okay. Yeah? If you're gonna cause a resistance, then sooner or later he's gonna break through. And I understand, you know what I mean, that he's got the manpower to just run through shit. Mm. But it war don't work like that. War don't work with you just what no, I don't uh, understand. Strategy. War, war. Strategy, bro. Yeah, it's, it's it's strategy. Like, no, you're 100% right. You're 100% right. It's, right, it's, right, it's, it's right, not just. When you are 100% right. It's a strategy. War is about run strategy. Through, you'll run through. No, no, yeah. no. No, no, no. If you saw, he's gone through different parts, bro. All right. Okay. Different parts. You're trying to get to the one place. The strategy would be this, yeah, is to take over with the least amount, yeah, of. Of Can't lives and casualties. casualties. Bro, he's, he's already said about the least that. amount of time. Like he's already that's it. That's, that's, what, what, that's what the strategy is. But he's already said he doesn't care about that. He's doing war. everything. He's but doing everything to everyone. He's doing everything to everyone. If he's you're doing everything to everyone. You don't care for Abido that. Does have oh, a, nah, Abido does have a point, though. If you look at Putin's mentality, it's not a strategy of war, bro. It's not a strategy If you look at Putin's mentality compared to this guy, Putin is ruthless. He's had to change his strategy, bro. He's had to change the strategy. He, he can't run go. straight through. He can't run straight through, bro. He can't. No. He can't run straight through. And obviously, we know that he, all these sanctions, it's hit him a bit, but we know he's got friends, but, isn't it? Okay, you know what? Yeah, look. Look at this, yeah? If you're enjoying the episode, guys, don't forget to leave a like on the video. Subscribe. Yeah, don't know, don't know, don't know, don't know. And make sure that you go and subscribe to Out of the Box. So you're telling me, yeah, a mad country like Russia with everything they got, who mm. have who have got all the borders from round here to round mm. here and round here, yeah, mm. are are struggling, yeah, and they've got they basically got the country encompassed. That's 
the best kind of strategy you can have. You should have the least amount of struggle in doing all of that. How can but that obviously be he's still got struggle? So he's got no. some sort of struggle. No, I don't accept that. I don't and accept the, that. Obviously, the struggle is getting less and less for him. So the that. Ukraine are going, please come and help us sense. send us sense. troops. And no one wants to do that, bro. No it doesn't one. Make sense. It doesn't no make one wants sense. to do it. It doesn't make sense, really? If he's got so, all of these borders round here, people, yeah? Right. You're not telling me the... Russia, the biggest country... The Russia, with like, the most amount of people, yeah, are struggling to cause any problem. And losing loads of people, and so tired of the war. Yeah, 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 that's that's ridiculous, bro. You think if that's the case with Ukraine, so what? He's, that, he's, he's so killing his own no, people for nothing. No, that is what I'm saying. 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 So NATO perspective, yeah. This is what they're thinking mm -hmm. now, yeah. Mm -hmm. Russia is such a major threat, but they're having so much problems with a small country like Ukraine. We don't give a fuck because they won't even touch us because they can't even they can't even compete against someone like Ukraine like that. And if they try to come against a military people like us, then regular we're gonna wipe them out so that's all that's showing in that whole war right now if that was the truth but that isn't obviously the truth is it ukraine can so do he's a killing lot more. his own people for nothing well that's what it looks like that's what you're saying so so you're telling me he's killing his own people for nothing what, he's literally he, the people that he he's the people that support him the people yeah. that are actually with him he's killing them off for nothing right so that's basically what you're saying yeah all right okay cool <laughs> that's what you're saying Okay, cool, let's go. З лідерами різних держав я чув декілька речей. Перше, перше, нас підтримують. Я дійсно вдячний державі, яка допомогла. So we were gonna compare the mentality of these two people, right? From Vladimir Putin to this guy. Who's more ruthless? Putin. Putin's more ruthless. Well, that's, so he, he, that's what he shows to us, yeah. This guy yeah, really so from, from what he's showing, he's showing he's more ruthless. It's so shows, it, it does show Zelensky's a little bit afraid right now. Yeah. So through strategies, do you think that maybe he's not applying his strategies correctly to his UK forces and military and maybe they could be fighting, I don't know, opposed in a better way because Putin seems more like he's more regimented in his regime of like strategizing and all them sort of tactics. All I know, uh, one thing I do know is one of his main tasks is to take this man out of power. I know that. But what would that he gain? has to come out of, then he could put one of his puppets in power. Right, okay. So just, and do just, basically... So basically he just wants figureheads in different, smaller regions to kind of... Is that what you're saying to me? Like he wants figureheads in different, smaller regions so he can kind of like... Well, I know he wants, he wants his own figurehead in Ukraine. I know that for a fact. I don't know about other parts and stuff, but the main the main thing, his job as ah, his president, he wants yeah. he wants someone of his team in his in his place. Mm -hmm. And if that means taking him out and taking out his family, that means so be it. That's basically what it is. Because he's already said he's already said goodbye to UN to UN members. Like he he, yeah. he was in a meeting up for via video link apparently. And he was saying that um, he had to say goodbye to them all because it could have been the last time they could see him alive. That was what he said to them, apparently. How long has he been in power for, anyway? I actually don't know. I don't know exactly how long he's been in power. I'm sure it's a it's a number of years. And you said that he was an actor first. Yeah, he was an actor or comedian. Or comedian, and he played a role. I think he was. I, I think he was. I think he was a more is a comedic actor. I think he was, and, and he, he actually. The role. And he actually played the role of the Ukrainian president, I think, in a film. So there's a, there's a difference there, TMG. You've got a real army president, military president, and then you've got an actor president. <laughs> this is what I was saying when it comes to strategy, and obviously, like, I know the difference, obviously. So your peak, like, let's not get back into that argument. Right? I know the difference of the size of the two fucking countries, yeah. But when looking at this guy, and you're like, obviously telling me, like, oh, he played a, the role of a fucking. Of, the president, and then, oh, look, now he's the Seriously, president. Just want a quick, like, Jay, if you can not be rude. Bro. If no, you can, bro, can, can you open up another tab and put in and put in Zelensky? I'm, look, I'm looking. I'm looking at him now. Z E L E N S K Y. Why? Two Y's. Okay. And it should have. A, it even says actor to look the comedian president. Mm -hmm. Um, there's another one. There's like a story on him. How it's like for how the comedian or how the actor became president. Yeah. He came, Look, okay, he came into there. office in 2019, it says here. So he's 
So he's quite recent. He's not, yeah, he's only been serving like, what, a couple of years. That's what I'm saying. I mean, we if you're looking at the presidents, five ministers, five presidents, sorry, five, five ministers, what are they? They're, presidents. They're presidents. Presidents. Yeah. Presidents. You've got Putin, who's really like, inside out and outside military base kind of guy yeah that, he got that was my history. point and this guy he is used. more of like a of a people people he's, a, like he's he an everyday man the, yeah he likes to look after the people of the country rather than yeah. try to start wars he wants to like give them like he's war. trying to look after his country and yeah, yeah, make yeah. it flourish he's not trying to go to war with anyone plus i don't think a man that would oh, yeah, look at how small this country well. would be like, do you know what? I'm going to go start a war with Russia because that's just dumb. Yeah, definitely. God give him his dues, though. He's doing well. He's yeah, definitely 100%. doing well. Yeah, yeah, shout out to him for transforming into being the president. Yeah, man. So you, you can even see when he's giving his speech like how fucking worried he is about his country. We mentioned that in an episode before. Is he, does he want another Iron Curtain? Yeah. yeah. Soviet Union thing, like I was saying before, man. Mm. He just wants to... I think that's what he wants. Вибухи ракет, бої і гул авіації. Це звук нової залізної завіси, яка опускається і закриває Росію від цивілізованого світу. Наше національне завдання, щоб ця завіса проходила не по нашій українській території, а вдома у Росії. Маємо інформацію про те, що у Київ зайшли диверсійні групи ворог. Тому я дуже прошу, киян, будьте уважні, дотримуйтесь правил гуманітарської oh, години. Я залишаюся в урядовому кварталі разом з усіма. Разом з усіма, хто необхідний для роботи центральної влади. I think it really speaks for his composes a second. I think it really speaks for his cam um, his character if he's still in the, if he's still in Ukraine, and he is. Just, he's, he's actually, yeah, exactly. fight, he's and actually he's fighting. Middle, and, yeah, and he's on the front line fighting. As I was gonna say that he's on the front line fighting, and he's the number one target, and his family are the number two target, and he's going up and like they're going against Russian assets. I think that speaks a lot for his character for someone who I know I was that wasn't mocking him earlier, but like for someone who was like an actor, as the and then became the president, and now he's like in this sort of situation. It's a, the way he's handling it. You know, obviously, as we we're saying, like, yeah, he's not from a military background. Yeah, credit where credit's due. Fair play to him, like, credit he's doing the best he's doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah credit where credit's due, definitely. I do I do definitely give it that. The dude, like, I'll be honest, in it? Like, if I was someone that's going up, if I was someone of what they class a political superpower, a nuclear mm -hmm. superpower, you know what I mean? And I was as ruthless as I was, been in power for 20 years plus, and, I, like, and I'm going up against a country that's had, that, that had a president, that used to be an actor and only come into office in 2019, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I'm, I reckon I would also at some point expect to just go, listen, bro, I'm running through this guy. This guy don't know nothing I know. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. As I said, credit where credit's due because yeah. it's taking him longer, isn't it? So, handling himself well. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely yeah. handled himself well. He's handled himself well. well. Мою родину як ціль номер два. Вони хочуть знищити Україну політично, знищивши главу держави. Pause it for me quickly for a minute, Jay. Now I am like I would be a little worried about that about like, and I know it seems stupid because it's worse being outside, but I'd be also be worried about being indoors because if you see some of the videos and so like these are like blocks of flats where people live bomb to hell you can just see it you know what i mean like so i, I would be worried regardless whether i'm indoors or outdoors because you don't know what's coming mm. you see what i'm saying i would be worried about that and look at the fact for the first day 137 ukrainians have been killed on day one of the war 
Да, по предыдущим данным, на жаль, мы втратили за сегодня уже 137 наших героев, наших граждан. Из них 10 офицеров. Поранено 316. Ладно, я... All, all madness aside, that does look crackers though, man. There you go. That looks like that just all madness aside, that, that just looks crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, rest in peace to all the lives lost on either side. Yeah, man, straight up, straight up. No joke. Yeah, um, obviously, um, we try to get the best sources credible but we've always got to take all this stuff with a pinch of salt because yeah yeah it could be popular yeah. news as well yeah, so yeah make sure everyone you do your due diligence yeah but i don't know, really yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah man it's a uh, for, for me it's, it's a weird situation because just like i was saying logically with the factors that are involved I don't see why he hasn't taken over already and why it's taken him so long. And that being said, leads me to think that, well, maybe he's not looking to go to war to, with Ukraine to take over Ukraine, but more so to show a front to NATO to get a response in a certain way. Now, like I said, man, if I was NATO... So what, do you think Russia wants to go to war with NATO? Well, like I said, man, we, we have, next week we'll look at Russia, but mm -hmm. it's not only Russia. So this is the thing, if, no. it was just, if it was just Russia, then no, nah, they wouldn't want to go NATO, 100%. No. But because there's, I believe there's people and Russia. Yeah, I there's people that, involved. I believe that that's what they want because we've already seen China saying that, well, we're not classing Russia as invading Ukraine. We're not going to... Yeah, no, that. we've seen so, that. We have seen me, that. In my, in my eyes, it feels like they're, they're looking for they look for someone to buy it in it and at the same time you know if i was nato and i was seeing this and knowing that you know russia was such a powerhouse in my head thinking like russia could take over and it's dangerous because they could do this but then they came across a small country like ukraine have had mm. and had so much struggle for me as nato i would be like kind of laughing like i'll be a donald trump like well these guys can't even take over a little country how do they think they're gonna do anything else in the world man so I, I definitely think there's a lot more behind it than them just trying to take over Ukraine or, you know, the, the certain bits. I mean, Kiev is very important to them, as we heard, uh, it's very important to Russia uh, as a whole, yeah. like they're yeah. So I understand that. But I think you take, they take Kiev, they take Ukraine. Yeah, so basically that's, yeah, that's the thing. And what, you see the, the president, is he in Kiev? Um, I don't know if he's exactly in it. I know he's in the Ukraine. I don't know if he's actually yeah, I think in he's just on the. I think he's just on the front line. I, I think don't... he's like borders. I think he might be on the borders and that where they're coming in. And and Kiev, how, where is that? Is that in the centre? I think that's the capital. I think that's oh, more central. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what that's I'm a, saying. Take that, they take the whole of Ukraine. It's not, it's, it's not, cap it's not capital. It's not, well, it is the capital, but I mean, it's not. Cent it's not centralized it's, it's more... not dead center but they class that as the center of the ukraine that's basically you know you take whoever takes that takes the ukraine well, i guess looking at the landmass you know it's i guess they can just put it you know have that where, they, where, it, where it needs to be but yeah mm. and realistically taking that means that like you're saying if they take that that means they would have taken that generally yeah that means mm -hmm. that's generally going to be taken by them as well and that means these countries, which are NATO countries, now need to be worried. Up. Woo! What country is this? I swear that's, that's like I swear they're like that, that's countries like Estonia and and countries like that. They 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 be ready to be eaten. Up. Worried. You need to be worried, like because that I just like I do think that like he does want Ukraine. Of like, he wants Kiev. If he wants Kiev, he wants Ukraine, right? But once, as we've seen already, if he takes Ukraine, he completes his team. So it's either he feels like, oh, I'm ready to go and take NATO countries now and go at NATO. Like, but I don't like, NATO's big, you know. They've got like 20-something countries to back each other. 
I swear. I swear is it involves like 25 countries or something. Probably. Something like that. Yeah. So it's gonna de it's definitely gonna be peak anyway, man. So mm. we'll see. I mean what what's your estimate then on the eventual takeover, do you reckon? To be honest, I, I reckon within the next 72 hours, TF's taken. Two days, okay. What about wow. you? What about you, Jim? Um, but it's starting. I can't really judge off the military forces, but I'd say give it think a think of what day we're on right now. Think of we're, I swear we're on like day 10 or something. Well, okay, well, okay, we're on day, day 10. I give it four days then. So cool. it'd be a not, it'd be a, it, by the so then it means that they've been this has been a, over two weeks because as you said, it's little skirmishes and whatever else. And if they, as they're saying, like from the videos that we're watching, if these strikes that they're doing are getting closer and closer to. What what's gonna just there's gonna be something one day where they just go oh, do you know what okay and they're just gonna yeah. but I, I think that. I don't want to say anything and wish it into fruition but I think if anything if they attack something it'll probably be like an important building in I do yeah. think there is I an mean, important factor just like I, like there's kind of two factors for me in it firstly obviously going by what Jay saying at least the reason why I say three days. It's because if we are going like by what Jay's saying a bit, their their weapon power, the stuff they've got, they will break through rather quickly when they're ready. You see what I'm saying? So uh, I feel like three days if we're going by ground, right? If yeah. they do this proper no fly zone thing, it might take a little bit longer because I do think going from ground and then and air, yeah, it will take them around 72 hours. But there's yeah. this thing with a no fly zone right now, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, and I we don't know. I swear, America it. said yes to it. We're waiting on Boris Johnson if is if he's going to say yes to it or something like that. I reckon. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just said something wrong to my attention. So Vladimir uh, Zelensky survives three assassination attempts in days. President Zelensky has survived at least three assassination attempts in the past week with two different groups sent to kill the Ukraine president. With one of them, I swear, one of the um, units is that Sputniks unit. Yeah, it's basically Russia's SAS. Mm -hmm. Also, Anonymous came out and condemned what obviously Russia's doing. Well, well, yeah, probably. but then did you hear about Russian the Russian killnet that hacked Anonymous? Oh, did they? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, apparently Anonymous an Anonymous got hacked by by a Russian killnet. So two different outfits shut down, there, shut down all their shit in it. Oh damn! So two different outfits. Why you, wait, wait, wait? Sorry to cut. Sorry, sorry. Why are you laughing, Jay? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Well, I'm laughing with none of us, man. These, I don't know. These I don't guys, know. guys, but I remember when it came out, yeah, and I was saying, we're going to do this and we're going to stop this and that. But, like, these guys ain't done nothing, bro. They ain't doing nothing for no one, bro. Like, good they got hacked. You know, <laughs> teach them a lesson, bro. Stop so, um, people. <laughs> So two different outfits have been sent to kill the Ukraine president. Mercenaries of Kremlin-backed Wanga Group and Chen Shek, Chen Chen Special Forces both Chechen. have been Chechen Chechen yeah, Special Unit. Both have been thwarted by anti-war elements with Russian Federal Security Systems, also known as the FSB. So yeah. He's been sending out some elite he, units, boy. He's well, they said that he's elite. the number. He's like on the number one hit. hit he's the number one hit list. That family, family's number, number two. two. Yeah. So, that must be scary. Let us know what you knowing think that you have to look over your shoulder, man. Yeah, let us know in the comments. But it it must be scary having to look over your shoulder like that, knowing there's people looking to wipe you out. Yeah, of course, man. And especially with the uh, like notoriety that Vladimir Putin has, as well as I was saying, you know, he's not mm. a man of few words. He's a man of action. So I'm sure if you want something to happen, he can make it happen. Yeah. He has a connection. That sort of side. Shit. So the last thing I want to quickly ask is: Has yeah. Putin, has Putin or Putin actually said, "I want to take over um, Ukraine"? I don't he think he's. To... So I, I think he's come out and said it in them specific words. What but he oh, he's on, said it in a roundabout. He okay. said it, so he said it in a roundabout. He hasn't said, I want the Ukraine. He hasn't said, because if he says them words, yeah, then he's calling it himself. He's calling it an invasion. And the one thing that everyone's trying, the one he's trying to keep away from is the word invasion. He's attacking the Ukraine. 
not invading the Ukraine, knowing though that if he gets Kiev, he's got the Ukraine and he's invaded it. And like, that comes you know back I mean? to Jay's earlier point of the whole fear thing. You know what I mean? Because if he goes, I'm a like, I'm going to invade your country, that's an act of war, and then you know, yeah. I guess that can spark right. people will have to get involved right. straight away yeah. without even thinking, really. Yeah. And then that's World War Three right there. But one, one, all right, one last question I'll ask you, just like I've asked before, like, do you think this could be a a two war at the same time thing? Because we know he's got brethrens, you know what I mean? And one of his brethrens don't like one of the Ukraine's brethrens right now, innit? We know that China don't like America. We know that, as we've been speaking, Russia's not down with NATO. Do we see two kind of wars happening at the same time, which equals World War Three? If other people get involved, then yes. But if nobody decides to, because at this moment in time, everyone's going, oh, we're back in there, we're back in there. Everyone's treading on eggshells. Yeah, because nobody's going to public, as you said, like it's like poking a bear, isn't it? No, like everyone's poking a bear, but nobody's actually showed their face yet. So until someone comes out and goes, I'm back in Russia, Mm. I'm backing Ukraine, and then obviously whoever backs who, they have enemies, they don't like, and you know there's all this fucking affiliations with different people, so yeah, if it gets to that point, that one country, army, come forward and go, oh, we're backing it, then I can see yeah. it potentially resulting in being two wars at one time. Um, but if that doesn't happen, then it will just stay how this is, and where everyone's basically like, oh, no one's invading anyone, but we're Russia's attacking us and we're trying to defend ourselves and everybody's got their opinions, but nobody comes forward and says anything about it. So if they, if somebody comes out and says, we're back in Russia or we're back in Ukraine, then yes, I agree with you. Jago, what do you think? Jay, what do you say? Oh man, like, I've said it before, I'll say it again, mate. Like, two years of pandemic, economies and infrastructures divide, <laughs> yeah? Mm. Putin, yeah, he ain't only gonna go and do little invasions in Ukraine. That ain't no end goal for him. This this guy's got a plan, fam. Trust me. And um, trust me, Ukraine is like not even. Yeah, I do think start. there's a plan. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely. This ain't it. This ain't it. Uh, this is the this is, thing, uh, this is the appetizer on your on your table, isn't it? Like you eat, eat your appetizer and it just warms up your belly. This is what that is for for Putin right now, man. Like. There's going to be skirmishes. Here's the thing, what's the main course and what's dessert though, bro? This is what I'm saying, like, it's hard to see. And for me, yeah, to be fair, I've never really been in the politics. I've never knew anything until this has happened and I've started researching. So I don't really know about too much about the histories and that. So I don't really know uh, if there's underlining core motives of, you know, movements or if it's just like a off the back of a pandemic thing, like take advantage of the situation kind of thing. Um, but yeah, man, whatever it is, mate, it can't be good. It can't be. Good. No, it can't be. It can't be. For real. For real. But if he's involved. Mad. All right. Yeah. Stay away from war. That's right. Mm. So, guys, as always, thank you for watching the show. Um, thank you for liking, sharing, and make sure you do carry on sharing. Um, and get involved in the comments, man. I see if you've yeah, been in the comments already. But Loving make it. sure you ask questions. Make sure anything you want, maybe get us involved in on the show, we'll get involved with as well. But yeah, big up the shield all the time. And it's yeah, always boy. out. Love for me, man. Jeez. Big shout out to the panel. You know what I mean? Another brilliant episode once again. Obviously, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let us know what you're feeling. Let us know what you're thinking. You know what I mean? If you agree with us, you agree with us. If you don't, you don't. But we're here to hear it. We read every comment and we want you to interact as much as you possibly can. More shows and more stuff coming from us in the future. I've been GMG News. Big shout out to the panel. And this is OTP. Yo, big up the panel. You know what I mean? We hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And obviously, we'll be back next week with another one. And until then, people, then, people, then, people, then. Um, it's man like out of the building. Jeez. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs>